So yeah, um, we are going to do the next talk. It's on, on the regressions topic. But uh, if we take a step back and uh, start where Nicholas left us, like what we've been wondering lately uh, in our work into CI and testing at Collabora is like um, we are running a lot of like things on different CI systems and uh, we are taking a lot of data out of that. And there's like, uh, you know, millions of tests or a few thousands of different tests that we are running every day. But are we able to analyze all those tests? Are we able to really like uh, make sense out of it? Are maintainers happy with it? I don't think so. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> And um, and then we start like thinking about it. Okay, what we, what we should do? Maybe we should look into how we are reporting the regressions that we are finding. But maybe you should take a step back and look into the quality of the tests. And that's like where his work comes from. Like uh, that we are looking uh, instead of just seeing like a shell at the end of the boot process and say, oh, that's nice, it's booted. When if, when it works, it works. It's nice. You don't need to do anything. But uh, when it fails, where is it failing? Like which device failed? Like uh, we don't have enough main uh, uh, person power, like to to do the, to do this kind of work, like across across the community. So we start like digging into different parts and to look into the quality of the testing that we are doing across the kernel. Like I think what we did so far was maybe two months of work, uh, but it's a beginning of like a process that we we want to to look at. Like uh, what's the quality of the test for the use case that we are interested in, in? In this case, that like the the use case that Collabra's clients are are supporting us to do. And uh, and then moving forward, like uh, running that in CI systems, improving CI systems, like we've been spending a lot of time on kernel CI. And then out of that, we, we go to like KCIDB, throwing all that data in there, and then we can analyze it and we can like uh, create like uh, uh, patterns or intelligence that uh, that will enable us to report better regressions to the, to the community. So that's like the, the, the whole like path, like the whole like uh, process that we are trying to 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 ask questions sometimes in a naive way. Oh, can we go back and see if uh, we can improve the device probe, or like can we look again into how we're reporting regressions, and try to ask like uh, more simple questions and uh, sometimes in a more naive way. But we are we are trying to do something there. And uh, yeah, let's start. Let's get started. We're gonna take this part and then we can take switching. Okay, so. Uh... Um, uh, yeah, so keep in mind that we are focusing on the regression side of things because um, I, we believe that we have enough tools on the uh, lower level uh, part of the equation. We have a lot of data to work with, but ultimately the, the purpose of all CI systems is to detect regressions. And um, what to, then the problem is what we do with uh, the regressions that the CI systems are detecting. And that's where we are finding some gaps that we are trying to fill in somehow. So uh, the current situation, as we see it, is that we have a few uh, kernel specific CI systems working right now, which do all the uh, hard work of uh, building up the infrastructure for tests. Uh, we have, uh, well, there are labs with uh, lots of different hardware and there are tests running and we are getting results. So. We have kernel CI, CKI, um, zero day, sysbot, bunch of things, and we are getting tons of data uh, from the test results. Um, but all of these are uh, kind of storing the results in, in, in their own ways, uh, differently, reporting them differently as well. There is a common place where the results are getting collected, which is KCIDB. Uh, that's at least trying to mitigate this problem by collecting the data from all these CI, different CI systems into uh, the same place. And uh, there's also some effort to do some work that's not being uh, a really big thing until now, which is keeping track of regressions, uh, since they are all reported differently and they are um, getting worked in, in different ways from people all over the place. There must be some way to keep track of the of the activity, of what's going on, who is working on what. So Regsbot uh, by Thorsten, who will be uh, with us presenting in, in the buff on on Wednesday, uh, tries to to tackle that problem. But there are quite a few problems, and um, just remember that we are seeing this from a na naive point of view from someone who just joined the party and took a look at what's going on. So uh, I understand we might be opening a messy kind of worms here, so we expect some fighting. But uh, what we are looking is that 
Um, from a usability point of view, there are a lot of developers who could maybe they are not aware of the regressions that could be important to them. Uh, and on the other hand, there are some maintainers who are getting flooded with uh, regression reports, way too many of them, and uh, they might not be interested in all of them. Um, that's because right now there's no really a uh, way of subscribing to certain parts or certain regressions. You can either get all of them or none of them. And you have go, you have to go to find them individually in uh, different mailing lists. So you can either get uh, too many of them uh, or maybe not the ones that you're after. Um, also, there are a lot of regression reports that are created automatically and they not always point to real regressions because uh, for a CI system, a regression is simply something that breaks a test. Uh, if a test goes from green to red, that's reported as a regression, but not all of them are caused by kernel changes. There could be infrastructure errors or hardware that fail for any reason, or the test could have uh, had some changes that suddenly make it fail, and it's not a problem in the kernel, it's a problem in the test. Um, there's another problem, which is the uh, current CI systems uh, provide, provide only a very basic uh, structure and information about regression. So as I said, um, as long as a test that was running is now failing, that's reported as a regression. But the information that you get normally is just um, the version that introduced the failure, the kernel config, the kernel, um, kernel version, build information, etc. And uh, it turns out there's a lot more things you can get out of that if you do the right work. Uh, and finally, there's this problem that I was talking about um, when I mentioned Rexbot. Uh, CI systems don't really uh, model the life cycle of a regression. They uh, consider a regression as a static thing, something that happened from one version to another. But regressions, as we'll see, uh, are a living thing. They have a life cycle. And uh, as far as I can tell, there are no uh, CI system that's taking that into account and that's providing that kind of information. The closest that we have is Rexbot, which is tracking the life cycle of a regression, but that's separate from CI systems. Um, you want to continue? So, I... Okay. So there are a few solutions that we think could work uh, to mitigate these problems. And the first one would be to improve the quality of uh, the regression data provided by CI systems. So uh, right now, what we have in all of these systems is uh, a bunch of uh, primitive and, and basic data from a regression, which is which test cost, uh, w which test is failing, what was the the environment, how it what, how the kernel was built, um, what was the, the the version that caused the failure, and the, the test log, the test output. And uh, this is all developers are getting today in a, in a regression report. Uh, but we figured out, figure out that if we take this same data and we do something with it, we post-process it, we can extract more useful information for developers. So for example, um, if, you, if, you, if you could zoom out the, the, the results for a, of a test, and instead of seeing a single failure, you can see the historic information about the test and you can see that the test is actually, well, it didn't fail today. It was working yesterday, failing the day before. Uh, there is uh, a bunch of uh, inconsistent results that don't seem related to the, to the kernel version. So it could be the test is unreliable because uh, there is a rest conditioning somewhere because there is uh, something failing in the uh, in the whole chain from uh, hardware to test definition and test run. So maybe this is not a regression, so false positive instead. Um, same way, you could uh, find neighbor results from the whole cloud of data that you have uh, in the database and maybe discover that other tests running in the same uh, lab setup around that time were failing, all of them. So maybe this is not a regression, it was a problem in that lab specifically or in that setup. So you can filter this out. It doesn't look like, like a regression. It's a problem because uh, I don't know, a particular laptop in the lab failed or because uh, the lab uh, had a 
was shut down for whatever reason. Uh, but this, again, this is something you, that you can extract from the base test results data. Uh, same way, you can uh, get uh, results from the same test on the uh, same kernel version, but with different kernel configs or different hardware or sort of different combinations of uh, things. You can change one degree of liberty and, and see how the results were. And this way, you can narrow down the possible causes for the regression. Instead of giving the de developer a simple test result, you could say to him, okay, or to her, uh, this failed but worked in this other hardware, uh, or this is failing just in this laboratory, or this is failing only with this particular kernel configuration, but this other is working. So that way you can kind of do a first step towards helping the developers investigate the problem. And uh, an important thing as well is log analysis. We are getting a lot of log information from all the tests but we are doing nothing with them. We are just presenting that to the developers and the maintainers. But if you could do some smart parsing or matching with uh, different logs from different regressions, you could actually figure out maybe what it looks like. You can maybe do some type of classification of the regression based on the log, or you can find similar regressions based on the log as well. This is all in the air. What we did do during the past few months is to do some experiments based on kernel CI results with a proof of concept that we wrote that was basically trying to do a bunch of this uh, to help us uh, because we are trying to work on regressions and we figure out, we found out that it was quite hard sometimes to uh, investigate some of them and it was a wasted effort because a lot of times they weren't really kernel regressions, they were something else that was failing. So we wrote a, a bunch of scripts and a utility to help us do this kind of manual work more automatic and help us filter out a lot of things that weren't really interesting to us. Um, so adding this extra layer of, uh, of scripting of post-processing can help us filter out some things that aren't really interested aren't really regressions uh, can perform some sort of automatic categorization of regressions so uh, for instance well the, the first layer of this would be just filtering out so if, a, if a regression failure regression failure looks like an infrastructure error then uh, we can detect that from the log and we can filter that out. It's not a regression, it's something else. So doing some log matching, we can maybe help create some categories and uh, do some automatic classification of regressions and help doing an initial pre-triaging stage for developers. Uh, there are a lot of people who are trying to do uh, work with regressions and uh, the first step is always trying to figure out which ones are the most important to tackle first. Um, so having a tool that help you uh, do, uh, maybe not automatically do the tracking for you, but helping you take a decision about the criticality of the regression and the impact uh, could be uh, really a time saver. Yeah. And like for now, like there has been only experiment that we've been trying things out and see how it works. Looks like with some of the case, case kind of CI data, but uh, the place where we are looking at right now in terms of like, implementing a solution that will be like more permanent in the community is KCIDB, which is uh, coming out of the Kernel CI Linux Foundation project. And it's uh, intending to collect data from different CI systems across the community. So there's like a data that uh, Head Head sending there, Microsoft sending there, Kernel CI sending data there, Sysbot sending data there, Zero Day, I think, is sending data that, that, there as well. So we have like this collection of data from different CI systems, different like test, te testing systems, and then we can start like adding some intelligence on top of it. So that's kind of like the the the, the idea we, we are trying to is slowly making progress into it. So that's like a uh, that's the goal we are we are trying to make progress on it. Maybe we should open for discussions. Maybe people have a thing on their mind already. Yeah. We can do it step by step, I guess. Like, yeah, it, that's because they're different solutions. Yeah. I was curious uh, if you can elaborate on the scope of uh, the types of uh, tests that you are interested in for finding regression. 
Well, I think from a community point of view, we are interested in pretty much like any test. But uh, as a collaborator, as a consultancy, we we are focusing like uh, first and foremost on the on the on the tests that our, our clients are interested in. Too. So our, our main use case right now is like device testing, like uh, the work that uh, Nicholas just present, for example, like uh, he's looking to how can we de detect like the probe of like device testing. But uh, the idea is to make this as generic as possible. Like, uh, but right now we are we are starting from a place that we that we have like problems to solve. Yeah. Or, uh, sorry, but ultimately the solutions that we are talking about should be uh, applicable to any kind of regression. It's not tailored to any specific type of regression. So it's just playing around a uh, certain type of regressions because that's what we have at hand and uh, what's, what looks important to us. But nothing about this is specific to a particular type. Are they all feature regressions though, or are any of them performance regressions? Are they like benchmarks? So far, we're only dealing with uh, non-performance related, but yeah. So um, <clears throat> do you envision in the long term this actually um, turning into something that you could be uh, actively trying to uh, automate the analysis of? So for instance, if you see you have a, a bunch of categories of things where you maybe you can detect infrastructure problems, right? So the board goes down in the lab. You don't want to treat that as a regression. So would you ever see that cycling back into the test it, testing infrastructure itself to say, okay, well, I see that this has failed on, well, going back to my one board, do I want to test the same thing on a different board? Um, so, I mean, I guess how, how prescriptive do you see this becoming? Okay. I don't think we have like any, any solution in mind yet, but that, that those are problems that we, we have to solve as we see them. Like, uh, we, it's just like there is way too many problems in front of us right now, and we are trying to pick like some of the, those bottlenecks and uh, and make progress on that, like so cleaning up, filtering things, and so on. Uh, that's like a, uh, I think the testing labs is one specific point, and uh, if we if we look like to bigger cycles, we we also want to go like a, you know, how much can we do in a pre marriage scenario as well? Like can we insert like more pre marriage data so we can feed that back in, and 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 solve things from from that point of view as well? Like that's maybe further down the line because there's just too much pro too many problems to solve. You talked okay. about- uh... wait, wait, wait a second, I want to add something to that. Uh, that has happened, actually happened at, at collaborating this uh, feedback loop uh, because now that we are able to detect some uh, infrastructure errors, we can create some statistics about, hey, uh, this kind of device is failing more than the others in the lab. Why is that? We can tell about that we can tell the lab people about that so they can figure out what's going on and can find a solution. We, we, until now, we just knew that some devices were failing. We didn't have any actual concrete data about which ones and in which tests. So this is, again, a way to uh, close the loop with the lab people. So you talked about uh, contacting the right people on the right mailing list. Um, you should just tell them to use lay and and every like make some kind of search searchable thing yeah, yeah. We, we, <laughs> we are going to that in, in, in the next slide so another thing um is that you're also looking at two different things right reporting regressions and then also providing as much information as you possibly can to maintainers and developers so if if a test fails would it be something um that you could trigger on a test failure and send after it if it fails rerun the test with more tracing enabled is that something you're looking into gathering so if you you, you, you ran a test suite and some of the tests failed so just run those tests on the same system, same board, with more tra F trace yeah. enabled or tracing enabled or events enabled, and gather more information that way. That might be very helpful too when you're reporting. Definitely, like uh, the driver for the work is like the community and maintainers. Like uh, based on the use case that we have for the for for our clients, like uh, 
it's the maintainers and developers who are going to give the feedback like hey can i do tracing after that that, fa that fails yeah we can we can implement that yeah, you because can we that. want to solve the problems from from the maintainer's point of view not from the ci point of view yeah so so anticipate what developers would need i think uh, karsten has yeah he, he just woke up so he, he said he woke up. So he he um, he put together a list. He was talking about what would be beneficial. And as I'm thinking about it, there are a lot of things that would be beneficial. Of course, gathering team message, which CIs tend to have that information. And mm -hmm. then uh, the other thing could be get more information after test fails. So that's. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thought I had. And and I think the other thing is like each maintainer will require a different thing. So we need to 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 make account for that somehow. Like uh, you know, in USB is one thing, in file systems a different thing. Well, you can start with a common denominator and start mm -hmm. adding things, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah, one other thing, and I suspect if you're you're going to continue talking about um, how to deliver. Uh, regression reports, there are two sort of different axes on which audiences for these sit. There are the people writing the code that has caused the regression and the people who have written the test that's failed. Um, and it's a different uh, perspective, but important to, to sort of target both groups. Um, I just wanted to say, I mean, my background is more like KTAP, so, and you said log analysis, you feel like you could get more out of it. I'm wondering if we could um, encourage specified types of warnings or errors that could give more information to you all that could be helpful. And then you could compare it over different runs seeing which ones you're getting just different types of errors or warnings. Would that be useful? Yeah, de definitely. That was one of the things we were talking about a few months ago, like having a common definition of test results all across the board, because right now it's a bit uh, I mean, every test is basically built differently and yeah. uh, provides a different set of logs and results. And uh, there is so much manual work to do to collect the results and go through them and investigate the, the problem. So, yeah, that definitely would help. But it's, again, everything that we are uh, presenting here is like too far-fetched in the future and needs so much collaboration. And basically, that's why we're here. These are our first first uh, step into probing the community to find out who is interested and who wants to cooperate in this kind of uh, undertaking. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's why, a why like, so I, yeah. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Gustavo, for the presentation. Um, one of the things, as you know, I, I kind of run CK at Red Hat, which is very similar to your service here. Is, you know, sometimes you, Tests fail, they can't always be reproduced. So bisecting is kind of out of the question, um, which kind of goes to Shua's point is, you know, is there ways to get more logs out of it? Is, we've run into some resistance in the community about if our test fails and we can't bisect that they're not interested in the results, but if we provide more log data, where is there people in the community who'll be willing to sift through the log data to kind of, I don't know, try to mentally figure out where the problem is as opposed to relying on a bisectable patch? I'm assuming you guys have seen similar. Yeah, but by, bisecting is by far the best tool that there is for developers to investigate a, a regression, but it's not the only one. I mean, we have fixed regressions without bisections just by collecting uh, this kind of data that we are talking about. It's not that it will fix, well, it's not that it will find the problem for you, but it will make it easier to find out where to look at um, if you have this kind of, you know, ways to filter out or to direct you to where the problem could be and, and weed out all the parts that aren't a, probably a cause for the problem. I don't know if that, that sounds like your question. So you're you're able to successfully bisect test results? What do you mean with bisecting, bisecting test results? A test fails. Yes. So the first question developers ask is what patch caused that test failure? Yeah. My experience is bisecting a, a, a test a failed test is hard because it's not always reproducible, which okay. means you always go down the wrong path. Or there's a good chance you go down the wrong path and lead to the wrong path. Yeah. yeah. Can I say I can do some of that? Like, uh, not always it will find it, but it can find, like, uh, oftentimes the, 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 commit, the commit that's failing the test. And then we have, like, heat checks and so on. And uh, during this effort, we found out some of, like, uh, 
uh, regressions that were bisected were verified by current CI, but it was too long. So there's more work to do in there to figure out that because what we don't want to start like a reporting that as if it was like a true regression and then you just burn the reputation of the maintainer and then they stop looking to a report. So, so based on some of the, I know we have a bunch of automated testing inside of Google and at least one solution that can kind of work for the non bisectable, non reproducible things is to work on seeing if you can generate a signature of the failure somehow. So if you can somehow take that failure and generate some signature that's unique enough for that failure, then you can start looking at it across more test results. And so you may not be able to say it started with this particular commit, but you may be able to at least say, hey, we saw it starting on this date, or we saw it across a bunch of different boards, or essentially the, the more you can sort of gather a signature about the failure, the more information you can get about it. So maybe when you see it the first time, you don't send out any kind of regression report, but maybe if you say, you know, start seeing the signature show up one out of every 200 tests, and the first time you saw it was, you know, January 3rd, 2023, you know, it's probably worth investigating because it's some sort of regression, right? Maybe at that point in time, you can start trying to do a statistical bypass or a bisect. But that would be what I would focus on is looking for trying to generate a signature of the failure, which will help you correlate it a bunch among a bunch of runs. I think K so KY. I've, yeah, I've seen that happen a number of times that some test fails randomly. And what I've done, I, I think my record was that I had to repeat the test like 200 times to get a reliable signature. And of course you've done a when the bisect like this, you know, it runs over days some, quite some success this way, but it takes forever to run those bisects. If you can identify what actually introduced the, or when it was introduced. So if you see like, oh, it was introduced with 6.1, or after six one, if you at that point, and then you know it's like okay, you run like fifty rounds of bisect and repeat each step a hundred times, you can find it. But uh, yeah, it does take forever. Yeah, stress test goes a long way usually to reproduce those flaky tests. Um, and I think to your point, like if you can isolate when it started failing, you actually go a long way also because. It's probably not, you don't know exactly which patch fail, make it fail, but you can find when it started. And usually like having time series over time where it's like green and then all of a sudden it starts flaking red, it's a good help to find and isolate. But my thing is from your system, it's actually out of band, right? So it gets, I mean, you, in this case, you want to be able to feed in the result from their system into your CI to be able to say, oh, I should start, you know, rerunning the test and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my struggle is just, I just don't have the, I can have a, I have a CI system that finds the thing. I just don't have the manpower to bisect it or, you know, analyze it like you guys are talking about. It's unfortunate. I'm looking for more can, can, can you have KUI? He has, has been waiting for a while there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally, a couple of questions. I love the idea of you know generating a unique signature for these regressions. You know, maybe we can talk about you know what format, uh, what are the things that should go into the signature, right? That that could be super useful to be able to tag something uniquely forever, right? That's one thing. The question I really wanted to ask is, um, you know, very often I'm not interested in all the regressions. I'm interested in regressions I might have caused checking in some new code, right? So to the extent we can filter out known issues and only look at new issues that have come up, right? That's going to be super useful as a PR gate. As we try to look at, you know, what, what should we do to make sure that we haven't regressed in quality from where we were? We always have bugs, that we know that. And so how do we manage the incremental, uh, you know, change in quality that has occurred? Yeah. Uh, so one of the things which might be really useful is uh, 
I think many of us actually have automatic rebasing systems because Git rebase is like the core, right? And that sort of works everywhere. But what you need is something that can iterate a test. I've seen some people need to do it 500 times. Um, and, you know, very often if it ends with the system crashing, it ends up being very, very specific to your CI system because you're actually having to grab the serial console output and then analyzing the serial console output to find the, you know, kernel oops message. Um, and then sometimes the signature is not exclusive. Like for example, um, if it's a lockdown warning, which SysBot really loves to give us, uh, there will be like three different lockdown warnings depending on which order you hit things, um, where they will say that you know the bug is a deadlock on this lock or lock B or lock C, and it's really all the same bug, but the system isn't smart enough to figure that out. Um, so one of the things that I would really love is if someone would like to come up with some sort of automated um, crash signature analysis, right? Python module that will like grab the serial console output and uniqueify it. Because the other thing that gets really annoying is many of these automated bisect systems will assume that any crash is the same signature um, and so I end up getting like an HR timer bug because it bisected to that, even though the bug was somewhere else, because there were multiple crashes that, you know, caused the bisection to go awry. So the whole finding a good crash signature is a key insight. Doing that well is hard. And to the extent that that could be an interchangeable module that we could all plug into our own CI bisecting systems, I think would really sort of help the system. The other thing I'll note is if you're having to run the test 200, 500 times just to find the darn flake, um, the pro tip is the first time it fails, it's a bisect bad. Right, And that's one of the other things that a lot of these systems don't know how to do is they insist on running the test 200 times, even though the first time you find a bad failure, as long as you can be reliable that the failure signature is in fact the right one, you don't have to run it the other 450 you know, times. So. Yeah, and I think like looking to crash reports, analyzing them, it's like it's maybe one of the biggest path for prioritization of the issues because then you can tell me like, oh, I've, I've been seeing like this a thousand times in my internal systems, and then you can inform the community of that, and that becomes a like, higher priority. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Oh, yeah, one more thing. We have a buff about this uh, on Thursday, That's so right. we can continue the conversation. Yeah, That's and right. Thorsten will be with us there from. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you very you. much.